Hi, this is Raymond Camden, and in this video, I'm going to show a quick example of what happens when you use the Ionic deploy service and really screw it up. Now, to be clear, what I'm showing here is not a bug on the Ionic side at all. This is something that is going to be completely my fault, and it's something that you want to avoid. Uh, but the question came up in a presentation recently about you know what happens when you do screw it up and I wanted to show an example. So this is the app in question. It has a grand total of two buttons. Uh, the top one will not only check for an update, it will actually automatically deploy it as well just to make things a bit simpler. Uh, the second button is calling a service that just alerts a message. And by the way, that's an example of a JavaScript alert. It's not good. Normally you would use the dialogue plugin to get a native alert and it, it would look a lot better, but not important, uh, just an example. So this is the code and it's typical Ionic deploy code. And this is the service and it's pretty simple. Now I've already done all the uh, prereqs to support Ionic deploy, it's ready to go. Uh, if I look at my console via gap debug and check for an update, it's going to push to a version that I recently updated to kind of fix some of the earlier testing I was doing, uh, but everything should work just fine. And if I run it again, oops, if I run it again, there's no update. Okay, so let's break this and let's break this in kind of a small way. I'm going to modify my service to add a runtime error. Um, X is not going to exist. This is not a syntax error. This is just something that will happen when the method is run. I'm going to go ahead and push up a new deployment and automatically deploy it. And it's doing its magic and it is done. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my console. All right, I'm gonna check for an update now and it should see the new version. And boom, now remember, I broke the service, so now when I click, bam, it's broken and I see the error in console. Uh, but for a regular user, uh, they would get nothing. They would hit the button and they just wouldn't know what's going on. But the rest of the application is still working. So if there are more buttons doing other things, etc., then it would work just fine. So let's fix this. Now I could fix this by rolling back, but I'm just gonna fix the code, save it, deploy, and we'll do version six now. And it's going. All right, and now if I check for an update again, it's gonna see it. And again, my code is both checking and automatically updating. And now the service is working again, cool. All right, so let's really break this. I'm gonna go into my app.js and I'm gonna add just totally invalid code, kitten, save it. All right, so we will deploy and we'll make this seven. And it's pushing up. And it's thinking about it. <laughs> All right. And waiting, waiting, waiting. The internets are a little bit slow. There we go. All right. So now let's see what happens when I check for an update again. And boom. And as you can see, it's like totally broken. And if I go ahead and close this, and run it again, uh, I have a completely broken app. Now at this point, there's nothing you can do. You have to actually push a new update via the App Store, or if I'm you know, still testing as I am now, I'd have to fix the code and resend it to the uh, uh, simulator. Uh, now I can also roll back uh, on the website, you can't do it via the CLI, or just push a new version up as well. So. I'll go ahead and push a new version up and I'll go ahead and also rebuild it to the device like so and it should come up back safe. So 
moral of the story here is uh, don't screw up. You know, obviously you want to actually test. I cannot imagine a scenario where you would modify code and push it without testing, but it does happen. And now you have an example of how it will impact the application.